What's up everybody, a Sparrow with a Gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. Uh, we're starting things off today with the Titan Mark I Heavy Command Assault Tank, or something close to that, I'm pretty sure. Um, so this is a little bit out of my usual wheelhouse. I don't typically do a whole lot of tanks and things, mainly just because they're smaller and I don't have as much to, to walk through and show off, but I just really, for some reason, not entirely sure what exactly it was, but really, really like the look of this tank. It was primarily an aesthetic thing, like I don't really know how well it functions or anything, I just really like the look of it. It's got a lot of different angles and you kind of unique shapes for a tank. It almost kind of looked like a small-scale ship. I could see the same kind of exterior design becoming a capital vessel or something like that, but it actually, you know, I just thought it was really cool looking. I love the little details of some of these small ship builds, like the, um, like the tail lights and stuff like that. It's a really cool touch. Supposedly, this is a very well-documented tank as well, as I was reading the description and it mentions that there's um, panels and stuff to explain a lot of the controls, so I wouldn't have to do it uh, off-camera and stuff as much and try and figure out how it works. Uh, there are custom turrets on the side, as you can see here. They are not the standard default turrets. I don't know, those are really close to the wall, so I don't know how limited their rotation and stuff is, but they are there. A um, lot of firepower going on, by the way. Because <laughs> I just noticed there's rocket launchers here in the front, there's Gatling, tur or Gatling guns right there, and then there's a main cannon, which is like six of these rocket launchers. So yeah, it's definitely got some, uh, got some firepower to it. Alright, so I'm assuming that opens this door. Ooh, and it's got a very cool interior. Um, so one of the cool things I liked about this also was the, the, um, well, I like that. Spotlights give off this cool smoky kind of look, which is a very neat, like, mood lighting kind of thing. Uh, so we have light switches, vent controls for if you're, I guess if you're on a uh, atmosphere type thing, or out of atmosphere. Though, I don't know if these doors are airtight, so I'm not really sure how all that would work. Uh, reactor access here, got a lot of bells and whistles to make everything look fancy. Ammo locker, weapons locker, tools locker, etc. locker. And this is, in fact, a script. A lot of people were pointing this out to me in, I think, the last episode, that I wasn't sure if these were textured um, images, and it is in fact a script, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I want to dig into that a little bit more at some point for future builds of my own. SOS beacon, radio communications, uh, enable broadcasting and toggle the block on and off. I wasn't sure what those two were there for. We've got a couple of remote blocks, though I'm theorizing that might be for looks. I'm not sure. I really like the center console thing. This is kind of cool. Um, you've got, like, a uh, blueprint th oh, I, I was right the first time. So there's orders and briefings, tactical planners, don't do troubleshooting tips. Oh, okay. Um, now, use to ready cannon if you can't move it or its control rights were taken by the gunner, blah, 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 blah. So, it says don't do but that kind of seems more like a do. Alright, so here's the main... Ooh, I like it. I like it, like it, like it. Here's the main cockpit, or the driver's seat. Uh, we have the GPS coordinates there, cargo and information here, and power there, speed acceleration there, uh, ammo on the left, a damage readout on that one, vehicle information, multi-directional radar, Ah, here's the one I was looking for. So this explains the bars here. So one is the front camera, two is the front Gatling gun, three is the front rocket launchers for volley, uh, control left turret, control right turret. Uh, oh, that might be what those remote blocks were for, is to control the turrets maybe. I'm not sure. They would have to be on the turrets though. Six is turbo, helps with inclinations. Uh, raise lower speed limit. Re release. It has deployable decoys, which is a cool thing I want to mess with and see what that's like. Um, action bar 3. 2 is down here for some reason. 
So we have camera, view from Canon's camera, ready Canon, re-enables mouse rotation. Uh, fire, overdrive, enables rapid fire mode. Ooh, safety lock. And as you can see here, is that what it said? Use the option if the cannon isn't moving. This takes control from the gunner. Okay, so the gunner and the driver can actually swap if you had a multi-crew going. Uh, two, four, and six is left, right, rear camera. Front, left, right, rear lights. Identification antenna, enemy presence, alarm. And then action four, maintenance elevator. Must be stationary projector on, off for self-repairs. Lock, unlock elevator. I wonder if that's like putting the car on jacks kind of thing. I'm wondering. Because that sounds kind of fun. Alright, so let's get into this real quick. Oh, I can't get a uh, external view. That's unfortunate. Oh, there we go. No, I was just in the wrong spot. Alright. So, can we... It does not seem we can control it through WASDA other than turning, but that's not uh, momentum. Okay, so... Wait, maybe... The, oh, I probably have the handbrake on. Like a dummy. Okay, so it was set for this. Yep, I had the handbrake on. Like a dummy. Alright, I'm hearing some clanging, so I'm gonna slow it down just a smidge. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't actually know if changing the speed actually controls the WASDA controls, or if that's just the regular controls or not. I think that's just the regular, if you just wanted a, a forward motion, maybe? I don't really know. It doesn't seem to be working that well for me. Oh, but there it goes. Okay, so that does control how fast you can go, it seems. Oh, I'm just never reaching it. All right, so if you can see in the left, I'm at four meters per second, and we can go up to 18 according to the stats thing there. So I'm just not speeding up enough. I'm trying to take it a little slow because I don't really want to damage anything and I'm trying to be a little more careful. Okay, so it drives really well, actually. Um, it's, it's very, very stable in its driving mechanics. I'm actually really surprised. They must have been doing a lot of improvements to wheels as well as designers doing improvements to designs because it never really used to work that well. Alright, so let's get get her slowed down a bit. Let's put the brake back on. Might be on an incline a little bit so I may not be fully able to completely stop. It looks like we're still slightly moving according to the speed. Anyways, so we have the main Gatling guns out the front. We have... these are the rocket launchers for the front, I believe. Which are very fun, and I like them. Okay, so then this is the left and right turret. So if we take over one of these and then go to the camera... Now they're all, I believe they're all safety locked, but the description said that the safety lock was actually more for pasting it in, and once you unlocked them, it really wasn't necessary to relock them again. And these are an on-off control. So when you turn them on, they just start firing, which is really cool. So yeah, that's neat. And as you can see there, it did move. So I guess it's fine. I really would have thought as close as they are to the wall that it would have had a harder time turning, but I guess they're fine. Um... Turbo, so that's something we want to try. Uh, let's take the parking brake off, increase our speed. We're going to head back this way, and just for fun, let's go ahead and hit the afterburners. Now, granted, it did say this was in more for incline, so we may not get too much extra turbo from that on the flat ground. I'm not really sure, because it doesn't seem to be speeding us up too much. And I have no way of controlling the thrust level, really, it doesn't look like. And then this is the front view.
Hmm. All right. So the turbos is probably more for if you're almost at a standstill or something and you just need an extra boost. I was kind of expecting it to, like, take off. Um, so let's slow this down. We'll lock this back in place again so that we don't go anywhere. Release decoys. I wanted to try this, too. Oh, I see. So as you're driving around, you could let go of those and then it would... You only you have one set of those, it looks like. So that's kind of an emergency you're getting shot at and you drop your decoys. That's kind of cool. Okay. And let's see. I'm, I'm really happy so far. I haven't blown anything up yet. Other than what I meant to blow up. Alright, so... Fire rocket launchers. Where is... Driver, ready cannon, rocket launchers, overdrive... Okay, so this is the cannon, I'm thinking. Right? Action bar 2. Ready cannon enables mouse rotation. So I might have to be in the gunner's seat then to take over the actual... Um, this is observation mode, mostly direction. Where's gunner? Cannon controls. Here we go. Okay. While seated, open the terminal, select cannon control, click control. Okay. Cannon control. And control. And there we go. So this is the same bar. Ready, camera, view from the... Okay, so view that. Ready cannon. Fires the weapon, overdrive, and safety lock. Alright. So this is the cannon view. We can't move it at this point. Two is supposed to ready the cannon. I don't know how long that takes. I knew it was too good to be true. Okay, so that didn't go too well. Um, let's go ahead and try this one more time. We're going to try it from the main cockpit this time, though. And see if we can set... So apparently the ready camera is supposed to... Or ready cannon toggle is really supposed to be for uh, taking control back from the gunner seat or the other seats type of thing so all right so that time it just disengaged it so that's good so now we actually have what does this one do overdrive mode okay so now we actually have the control of the rocket launcher okay so it's supposed to be in a sequence. It keeps coming up saying it's not working, though. I'm not sure why, or if it's just because I'm doing something wrong. So let's try overdrive, because what could possibly go wrong? <gasps> oh, it extends it! Oh, no, that's cool. Oh, wait. Hold on. So am I in control of the... I am. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I love the extension. And then you can retract it. Oh, that's pretty sweet. All right, so that's going to do it for this one, finally. I wanted to show the turret off correctly, though. Uh, let's move on to the next one. All right, so next up we have the Aquila Personal Dropship. Now, I should note this really early on in this showcase that uh, the description did not really have much of anything to go off of in terms of how things work or what to do with it. So, if I blow something up, still my fault, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I wasn't told how to do it otherwise. Overall, though, I really like the look of this ship. Um, it has kind of a, almost like a halo dropship kind of look, like, uh, I forget what they were called. Um, but it has kind of that somewhat realistic design of a dropship or a hovercraft or something like that. Um, I really like the cockpit up here. It kind of has, I don't know, it just kind of reminds me of like, um, almost like a helmet from like Warhammer or something. It kind of has like an angry face kind of thing. It's just a really cool looking... Um, front part here. We've got a couple turrets on the side, looks like. I'm also a fan of these hover pod things, like this, how they have the thrusters on an angle. I think that's kind of a cool touch. I don't really know if it 
actually does anything for gameplay wise but I really like the uh, I really like the touch of aesthetics it looks really cool so there's a hatch off the back we're gonna try and see if we can go in on the side though it's a very convenient ramp here this does require it is a blueprint but it does require um, one mod I forget which one it was like the small ship multi-pack or something like that Okay. Front door. Oh, and it has uh, blast doors too. That's cool. That's a nice touch. I like that. So as the name implies, it is a drop ship. So we have some information readout stuff here, but then primarily you have a location for all of your troops that can be dropped out. Now, just the way this looks, I just thought to myself that would be kind of cool if this whole like floor opened up and you just dump people out, but I don't think that's how it works. Pretty sure it works this way. From the ramp. Oh, and the lights change too. That's cool. To let you know, hey, we're all jumping out kind of thing. That's pretty cool. I like it. Very, very cool. And the lights come back on. Very nice. And we have a some detail work stuff here and containers and things of that nature. We've got a flight seat here that controls Gatling turret 3 turns it on and off and then control of four so is there only those two maybe so that would make this the gunner position then I'm guessing I don't actually see any other turrets actually I don't really see any visible weapons other than that now that I'm looking at it which I mean I guess it makes sense it is supposed to be a drop ship um, and then we've got the front flight area here which this looks like all of your thruster controls. I'm guessing that's the main flight seat. Because it has more stuff, more control of things. Um, the hydrogen thrusters, atmospheric thrusters, Gatling turrets are on. Connectors, lock and unlock, gravity, um, spotlights, timer, front door, and ramp. And then lights. Okay. So yeah, and then we've got some cool readouts here that do damage information and so forth. So overall, I really like the interior and stuff, but as I said, I do really like the outside. I really like how it looks. It's got a cool, cool look to it. So for testing purposes, let's see how she flies. Um, actually really well, especially with, um, what is it? oh, that must be the atmospheric thrusters. I was like, what is that sound? But yeah, especially fighting normal gravity and stuff, um, it's it's flying really nice. I like it. And it's very, very quick. So yeah, overall, I really think, I really like it. Design and everything. And on the bottom, you've got the connectors down here as well as a lot more atmospheric thrusters that I did not see before. So that's, and oh, that's cool. It's got an oxygen generator or oxygen generators on the bottom. That's pretty neat for I guess with hydrogen thrusters, I assume you could go out into space with it. I don't know if it actually can make the re-entry or not. Um, but yeah, if you were out in space, you could use the farms and stuff to restore your oxygen stuff. So that's pretty cool too. That's a nice little note and then there's the hydrogen tanks up on top there looks like and there's probably some in these pods as well in these little engine pods all right so on that note let's move on to the last one all righty so last but not least we have the university of applied space sciences now this is actually a bit of an interesting uh base build kind of thing for a couple of different reasons but one while the description did not really give me a whole lot to go on in terms of what each room is for and how the base actually works, um, it did actually set up quite a bit of like lore for the background story behind this kind of building. And it even had like a link to a WordPress site which went into more detail on <laughs> kind of the story setup and things. So very well thought out. Um, I didn't read the whole thing on the site, I read the Steam description, but it's still very intricate as far as like the, there was definitely a lot of thought put into this 
Uh, but it's basically, as the name implies, it's supposed to be like a futuristic school type thing of applied sciences, but it's for space technology. Hence, we're on like a lunar base, like a moon, like the moon kind of thing. Not a moon, but, you know, the moon. Um, so I like the base on the outside. I don't really know where I spawned. I was using the spectator camera to give you the outside view. Uh, no agenda currently. Fly me to the moon. That's kind of cool. There are a lot of mods in this one, but I really, really like the interior design. This is the majority of why I picked this one for this episode, is it has some really cool... I mean, yes, it is using a lot of mods to do it, but it's got some really cool... Um, uh, yeah. Interior layouts and things, like using the hydroponics and things as decorative. And Actually, I've never even seen this statue before. Uh, oh, it it moves. Space is oh, it's all, only an it's only an hour's drive away if your car could go straight upwards. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I like that. I don't know how often that actually changes. Was that because I went into proximity or I don't know. Maybe that maybe that always stays that way. And it was just a LOD thing as I got closer or something. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a cool... I don't even know what mod that is, but that's kind of cool. Got some images there. Agenda. Auditorium 1, Complex Data Analysis. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in this place. Current lecture, none. Mess hall. So we're in the mess hall, I guess? Or is that saying the mess hall is this way? I probably don't have time to show everything. I'm not entirely sure how long that would take. Um, I will do my darndest, but if you, if I don't get around to everything, I highly encourage everybody to at least give this a, a look through, especially if you're looking at doing interiors. Now, I know a lot of people don't like using mods and things, but I've agreed with a lot of people that have kind of pointed the finger of, you know, it's, it's really, really, really tough. I, we've seen some people, especially on the Inspiration series, some of the builds that I've showcased can't, have done it. Um... But it's very, very tough to do interiors, highly detailed interiors anyway, uh, without some semblance of mods. Because there's just not a lot of decorative blocks in the game at the moment. Um, a lot of people have taken to using... I'm, I'm so lost right now, I don't know how to get out of here. Um... I guess we're going this way. We'll see where this goes. A lot of people have taken to using the uh, small grid rotor trick, where you use a small rotor head so that you can build a little more detailed, which it works. Um, we've seen a, quite a few builds recently that have made use of that exact technique. Whoa! Okay, I let the air out. But like this kind of stuff, you just you just don't have this. I mean, you can make it kind of, but it's it still requires the user to have kind of a little bit of a um, oh that must be a stove, you know that kind of thing as a as opposed to just being able to look at stuff. So you know if it, if you're not into mods, this might not be the build for you. But if you don't mind them, then I would definitely encourage. Um, looking through it. It actually runs surprisingly well. I wasn't sure, given that it was supposed to be a large structure on top of a, a moon, and I didn't even know until I spun the camera around while I was recording this that there's actually a planet in the background too. It's not just a moon. So between a moon and a planet and all the mods and stuff, I was really surprised that this ran this well. But I was getting above 30 uh, frames before I started recording and of course I keep my frames locked at 30 so once I start recording that's what I get but yeah this is some cool stuff um, I could even see I don't know I haven't seen too much of like production type stuff like assemblers and whatnot but I could even see using this as some kind of uh, survival base kind of thing if you wanted to put a base on the moon type of deal or actually, I guess you could use it wherever. I don't know that there... Again, the description was more lore-based, not really discussing the mechanics and functions of the of the base itself. So you have a med bay. Oh, I remember those. Those are those cool modded ones. And we got a sick room for, you know, people to watch you while you watch TV, because that's not creepy at all. I'm sure it's just for the doctors for observation. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Um, that's the med bay. 
So we must be nearing the engineering type section here as everything's turning more utility and is also painted yellow. Uh, that goes back to where we were before because I remember the sign said library. Main hall is this way. Oh, this must be the mess hall. Recreational observation booths. Wait, this is back where I started from, isn't it? I'm so lost. Oh, okay. Now I got it. This is further ahead. Okay, so here's the canteen. That's kind of cool. Oh, and there's an upstairs. Ooh, where's this go? Now, I got to admit, space kind of freaks me out in reality a little bit. I love it in sci-fi. I mean, I'll, I, I adore space in sci-fi, Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, all that kind of stuff. But in reality, the idea of, like, if there's a crack in the window, you could die always kind of... Um, <clears throat> made me a little uneasy if you if you will but i have to admit if you were going to like school or something that would be a cool place to have lunch where you could just look out on like earth or something because you're on the moon that would be kind of cool it would be kind of cool but i would definitely want to be in this level of technology where you have like a full-blown comfortable base not just you know kind of the bare bones like that that is an awesome lecture hall or wherever we are where are we that's the residential block do we have a sign here auditorium one what's this current lecture about complex data analysis risk assessment and stressful situations okay so yeah this is pretty cool this is a pretty neat setup oh that's a neat that's a neat picture actually i'm not a hundred percent sure i could be very wrong about this but that reminds me of a city in armored core i think I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, so like I said, I may not get to every little thing. Frankly, I might be lost. Uh, as I do seem to be spending a lot of my time trying to figure out where I am. Even though everything's well labeled, don't get me wrong, it's mostly my fault. Not because there aren't signs everywhere. So this is kind of cool. I like how the, the base feels different in different areas. Like, the utility is more cramped and functional based. You know, you got these, like, utility closets and conveyors and cables and pipes and all that kind of stuff. But when you're out in, like, the auditoriums and stuff, it's much more open things. I think that's kind of cool. Now, like, there's the workshop, as the name implied. Go figure! That's <laughs> what the sign said. <clears throat> I mean, signs, what do they know? And what is this? Hangar door. I wasn't sure if that was some kind of emergency hatch or something. This is suspicious. Hangar door side. Why do I get the feeling like the floor should move? Or maybe that's the idea, but they don't actually move? I gotta find out. That's another thing I like in, in games and sci-fi and stuff is sunken hidden bases underground it's always cool okay so that just seems to be the door i don't see any other buttons or anything so i guess that's just for looks maybe that's not really a button control panel eh we'll leave it i thought maybe that might be some kind of secret underground hangar uh, we've got a view here for some reason. Hydroponics, looks like. Where's this way go? Let's just open all the doors. What could possibly go wrong? It's not like we get sucked out of an airlock or anything. <laughs> Alright. I don't actually know where that went. I think this ties back into the rest of the base. Looks that way. Yep, there's workshop and tunnel, so I made my way back. I somehow keep managing to make my way back to exactly where I left off. I don't know how I keep doing that. I promise I don't. I'm not doing it on purpose. I really don't know where I'm going half the time. I'm just looking at cool stuff and exploring. But it seems like when I go through another door and keep going up and stuff, I just end up back in another door where I left off. And this leads back to. <laughs> back to the main hall i can't escape this place that, that main hall is everywhere 
I mean, I guess that's the whole point, but, you know. I'm looking to see... Okay, let's speed this up and see what's down at this end here real quick. And then I might head upwards, because I kind of want to see what they did with the surface stuff. And there was um, one of the links. Yeah, this is called a moving auditorium, which I thought was an interesting name from the, from the get-go. Oh, that's weird. We're actually out. Ooh, that's creepy. Oh, and the sound changed. Alright, there we go. So I may not drive this one around too, too much. They have a restroom there with a coffee area. Break area. Uh, I'm not sure what this is for. This could be engineering or pilot use. This is like an observation area. So I think this is more the, the classroom auditorium thing. Okay, so this is like the back then, technically. But I thought that was a neat idea. It was like, you're out in space. Why not have a mobile auditorium? Because that's awesome. I'm going to get in here so I can do an uh, exterior view. So yeah, you got the driver's seat up here, but then out the back is like a full freaking classroom, which is awesome. I didn't have any of that stuff when I went to college. Just saying. I mean, granted, my, my school wasn't on, in space either, so, you know, can't complain too much, I guess. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, let's see. I want to go up higher, though. I want to see if there's any... So this looks like uh, main control or hangar control, at least. Because you're kind of monitoring the landing pad. Oh, what is that? That has a lot of thrusters on it. Now I kind of want to know what that is. Let's see if we can't find our way out there. This leads back. Okay, this is the bridge. Or no, this is that was the bridge. All right, there we go. Moving auditorium two, landing pad two, timetable. So I don't know where landing pad one is, so we're just going to try and make our way out through here. And see if this works. I do think it's kind of cool, uh, especially since it's supposed to be realistic, like it's a, a, a space exploration school type thing, that they set the um, the sound to be realistic when it's outside and stuff. That's kind of cool. It's a nice touch. All right, so now we should be outside on the landing pads. What is this thing? Besides weird and cool looking. It kind of looks like a flying house. Which would be really interesting, actually. Speaking of... Oh, wait, that's the... Nope, this is all just a small ship grid. Never mind. I was going to say, speaking of the whole small ship for details, but I think that's just small ship... No! Is it? I think this whole thing is a small ship grid. Either that, or it's because of the use of mods that they had the ability to use, like, the interior blocks. That's probably what it is. Okay, so this is a shuttle, then. Slash, kind of, classroom-type thing. And here's the pilot seats. That's pretty cool, though. Overall, just some really different stuff. I mean, we see a lot of military-type bases and ships and things, but you don't really see, hey, this is a space college. You know, that doesn't usually come up in the workshop very often, so I thought it was a pretty cool one to take a look at. That's like utility crane type thing. I'm not really sure what that is, actually. Looks like some kind of utility ship. So anyways, I think... Oh, there's another planet over there. Wow. This is running really good for having all these planets in here. And then, of course, we have a lot of solar panels for power, obviously. But that's going to do it for us for this episode, so I think we're going to wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.